It is still going on, grooming, rape and sex abuse in Rochdale and beyond. Today's report merely deals with the recent past. Six children raped and exploited by a gang of men for five years. Yet 17 different agencies, including the police and social services, failed completely to give them sufficient help. Today's report says much of it could have been prevented. The review was prompted by the conviction of nine men last year, but police now admit that up to 30 other suspects were never prosecuted at all. This report by Cordelia Lynch begins with the testimony of one victim, voiced by an actor. I was 13 years old and passed between them like a bomb. I suffered rape and threats of violence. What made things worse for me was the attitude of the police. I told them about what was happening. I gave them names, phone numbers and car registrations. I told them about a man who made threats to kill me. The men were not arrested and I still sometimes see them walking the streets of Rochdale. This terrifies me. She continues to suffer, one of the many victims of a grooming gang in Rochdale that was allowed to thrive by a police force that failed to listen or act. Last year, nine men, mostly of Pakistani origin, were convicted of abusing the vulnerable girls, plying them with alcohol and cigarettes. But there are many more who were reported by the girls and their families, but were not investigated. Much of the abuse happened here in Hayward. And now more than 18 months down the line, we have two reports into two separate cases with one central question. How could it be that young, vulnerable girls could report years of systematic sexual abuse and yet the agencies who are meant to be protecting them failed to stop it? 17, including NHS trusts and social services, missed countless opportunities. Some of the girls were as young as 12, but officers from Greater Manchester Police suggested their decision to be with the men, some in their 50s, was a lifestyle choice. And when one girl fell pregnant, they obtained the aborted fetus for evidence without her permission. It was only years later, when they gained my trust under false pretenses, that they told me they had kept the fetus and wanted to use it in evidence. Sir Peter Fahey was Chief Constable in 2008. Today's report states his detectives were untrained and failed to report allegations of rape as crimes. When you read through the way that those officers behaved in this case, are you ashamed? No, I'm not. I'm not ashamed because um, I think it is very easy to blame individual police officers. I've got a lot of sympathy for officers that are working with the system. I remember in those days going to Rochdale CID, sitting next to police officers who absolutely believed their victim, um, but had, had found inconsistencies in the story, had found that the, you know, the victim had previous convictions, drug issues, alcohol issues, and already knew that when they put the case through to the Crown Prosecution Service or tried to get into court, that the case would not be taken forward. But today the force is criticised for failing to challenge that decision by the Crown Prosecution Service not to prosecute. Prior to this case, a view was taken that a case couldn't be built on the credibility of a young girl who had a troubled or a chaotic background. We took the decision in 2011 to bring this prosecution, uh, to successfully prosecute it, and therefore why can't it be done everywhere? This case review reads like so many others before it, a woeful tale of miscommunication, agencies failing to talk to each other and critically to listen to the victims and their families. In one case, a father was so concerned he called social services and the police 50 times, only to be told by one social worker that his daughter was a child prostitute. I've got files like that. Maggie Oliver worked on the case but resigned last year over the way police treated victims. She spoke exclusively to Channel 4 News. When I read a report that focuses on 2008 and I'm told that we've learned lessons from this and things are so much better now, well I have got evidence to say that in 2011 things were no better in 2012. Who do you think should be held accountable? I guess the Chief Constable. My audit trail went right through to the Chief Constable. I documented in writing all my concerns and I backed up what I was saying with uh, documentary evidence. Jonathan Bridge is the lawyer for three of the victims. I think even in the Rochdale case, you will be looking at hundreds potentially still out there preying on victims. 
One of my clients who was abused in Rochdale also reports abuse in seven or eight other towns across the northwest and even down as far as, as Wolverhampton in the Midlands. And this was a, a feature of this type of abuse that not only were the girls abused in a specific town, but they would be passed between gangs in other towns. And unfortunately, I think Rochdale is just the tip of an iceberg. The Independent Police Complaints Commission are due to publish a report into Rochdale, but the girls, now troubled young women, have already lost all faith in the force. The abuse I suffered at the hands of the gang has made a massive impact on my life, but it's been made so much worse by the police. I feel so let down by them and feel what has happened to me could have been prevented had they acted more quickly.